<laughs> Action. Here we go. Um, appreciate you letting us come in today. I'm Joe Chikora. I'm the National Sales Manager for Red White Bale. Um, NHEH is our rep um, out of the area. Dan Pelbaugh is the Bob. Sales Manager at Yates. Bob Fish. Bob lives up in... Bob, where are you? Scranton. And Mike Holmes, I think is... I live here. here. I live in York. Mm -hmm. um, real briefly, just a short um, thing to talk about. We're an Italian valve manufacturer. Um, Red White Valve was started back in the 70s, the early 70s, by a Japanese company. Uh, back in those days, everything was the gate valve design to turn water or gas or oil on or off. Um, and that's what the Japanese did. They were known for making gate valves and check valves. Uh, back in those days, and again, this is back in the 70s, the Italians were about the only people in the world making ball valves. Um, they were the premier ball valve. At that time, there were none being made in the uh, Pacific Rim or wherever you want to call it, the Far East. As the gate valve business started to drop off, just because the ball valve business was a more true, positive on and off uh, gate valves, if you used them to throttle, if that gate in the valve was like halfway open and halfway closed, as the water passed across it, it would wear that brass down, then the valve would never shut off. Um, many of you might have gate valves in your houses where you turn it and you turn it and you turn it and you turn it and nothing's happening. Uh, it was just a, it wasn't a poor design, it was just an older design. Ball valves are a much better um, product for the plumbing and the heating industry. So as that gate valve business started to deteriorate and the ball valve business started coming up, um, the Japanese actually ran the business down to a point where the Italians turned around and just bought the company. So we've been wholly owned by the Italians for about 12 years. And if you look on the side of our valve, you'll see a VIR that is um, right in the casting of the valve. That means Valve Industrial Rizzio, and when you look in your price list, um, in the front there's just a little blurb, and it'll show our plant in Italy. We actually have two and a half plants there. We have a little plastic injection molding place that we'll talk about, but we have two plants. We do all the manufacturing there. About six years ago, just to be able to compete on the worldwide scale um, with the Chinese product that's being that's been introduced in the U.S. years and years back. We did put up our own building in China. It's our building. Um, logistically, with the Chinese, it's a little different. We own the building, but we don't own the property. We have to pay the workers what they tell us to pay them. It's, it's a little, it's different. But it is our place. We have two people from Italy there, two engineers, all the time. They oversee all the production, all the quality control. So even though we do have a plant in China, it's, it's our own plant, and all we did because of the cost savings to make product there, all we do is assemble our castings there on the lower end product, the $2 boiler drains, that type of product. So um, again, we have two plants in Milan, um, and that's where all of our engineering done. Everything is done out of Milan, Italy. We do have a plant in China. And this is an important thing to remember. We talked about this when we had our little symposium with you a couple a month or so ago. Um, product that's made in Italy qualifies for the Buy American Act. There's the Buy America Act, and there's the Buy American Act. Um, there's about 12 or 13 favored nations, original NATO nations. And if the product was manufactured in that country, it does qualify for the Buy American Act. All right. The Buy America is the one where uh, it's like Obamacare. It's about 6,000 pages. Um, you, you'd never understand it. But when you get to the very, very last page, it states that if a product is not made domestically, if, if, there's, you know, if price is an absolute must to get the project done, you can buy a, project, a product from China or overseas. That's the Buy America Act. Very, very, very stringent. All right? But we do qualify for the Buy American Act if there's state money, government money, city money on a project, uh, even in an industrial side where you get involved with, it's, it very possibly could be. Keep in mind that our Italian product does qualify. So, um, Commercial product, again being on the industrial commercial side, we're up to 24 inch. 
we do have butterflies that are over 30, over 24, 30 and 36, um, but not in stock. We stock up through 24 inch, even over in Pittsburgh at the warehouse there. So, and that's not gates, globes, butterflies, larger valves. Is there anything at all that you manufacture in the USA? No. Nope. No. The balancing valve market is, um, I'm going to talk about it briefly. You may get involved with it somewhat, and you may not, uh, on the industrial and commer commercial applications. Usually there's a contractor involved um, that has a test and balance uh, manometer that he can use. But we supply 35% of all the balancing valves in the European market. We're very, very big in this, and we've made a huge push in the United States in the last couple of years. But we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, same thing I already said, we do have the eight stocking <coughs> warehouses, and we have one main distribution center that's in California where our office is, and that's because all the product comes into Long Beach, California, where it gets unloaded through customs. We receive about two containers a week. The plant in Italy, <coughs> the building in China. <coughs> we had a lot of issues getting product shipped from China. It would take five to six weeks. About a year ago, we started our own um, logistics company. And now we're getting product within two to three weeks. So it worked. We just set up a separate company. We bring everything in. Uh, it's just easier for us to ship, not to get into anything that doesn't matter to you. But You've had our low lead valves, I think, for almost three years now, two and a half, three years. As you know, the... Uh, the low lead law went into effect on January 4th of 2014. We have been making low lead valves since 2009, uh, way before the law when it was implemented. And the reason was because in 2010, it was in effect in California and Vermont. Uh, you heard me say just a couple minutes ago that we bring all our product into Long Beach, California. We're based out of California. We own the market in the U.S. from Denver West. Um, if a distributor wanted to open up and buy red white from us in California, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, out that way, it, it would almost be impossible. We have the market saturated. We do very, very well there. But we should. It's our backyard. Um, and we're very, very strong out on the West Coast. We are here too, also, but that's our backyard. So we had to start making low lead valves back in about 2008 to be prepared for the 2010 market. We knew that NIPCO was um, was really expending, experimenting with the silicone. Uh, some of you have heard this before, so I hope I'm not boring you. When you make a brass valve, a ball valve, we have to bore out, obviously, the brass metal in it. The lead that was in it was a lubricant. It allowed us to machine. We could bore out three-quarter inch valves about a thousand in an hour. From the start to the finish, we could be done. So nobody really wanted to lose that, that yield time. So in order to keep something soft in the valve so you can manufacture it, NIPCO experimented with silicone, and a couple of other people used bismuth, uh, which was a huge mistake. Uh, Ferguson used bismuth in their ProFlow valves. And bismuth is a material that once it's machined, once it's manufactured, it's very, very brittle. All you had to do was over-tighten a pipe nipple into a valve, mm. barely, and it's going to crack. Uh, Ferguson had huge, huge issues. They still have about 70 insurance slash lawsuits out on the West Coast. Valves that were behind a wall that started to leak. So the bismuth plus bismuth is a uh, carcinogenic. Mm. And keep in mind that this law came from California like a lot of our foolish laws. So bismuth is a carcinogenic. Of course, so is 2% milk in California. But um, <laughs> So the bismuth just was nothing that we were going to mess with. Um, and we had already heard <coughs> horror stories about the silicone. That when you would go to sweat the valve, it would almost cook the silicone out of the valve. It would not take the solder. <coughs> you had to use a higher temperature solder. Hot, higher temperature flux, and that's what's going on with a few of our competitors. Um, not to badmouth NIPCO, they're a great company, but this is the difference between ours and everybody else's. 
we are the only people that said to ourselves, you know what, we're going to lose the yield time. When we took the lead out of the valve, there's still less than 0.25%, which is what the law states. So all we did was put copper and tin back in the valve, which is what's in the valve anyways. But we slowed our machining down almost 30%. We were making a thousand valves in an hour, we were down to about just under 700. So our price increase when the low lead law went into effect really wasn't because we were buying any material to, to make the valve qualify for low lead. We just, we lost our yield time. That's where our price increase came. We lost about 30%, but I don't remember to date, unless you can tell me, I, I've not gotten one low level bail back from IPS for a complaint about it, having problems soldering it. Some of our competitors on their low lead bales have a tag with an 800 number and an internet to watch a film if you can't figure out how to do it or if you're having problems. No high temperature solder and no high temperature flux on our bales, which is completely different from everybody else's. So just wanted to spend a couple minutes. Any issues with soldering or, or Low lead valves, since you guys have brought them in, don't be afraid to speak up. We're going to run through this really quick because I want to, there's some other products that uh, we have some possibilities with you. Um, we've got three series of ball valves. We make one in China, and the other two come from our plant in Italy. And basically, the difference behind them is the gas rating, your CSA gas rating. They're a little bit beefier as they get more expensive. We put a little more into it, but our valve from our plant in China has a half CSA rating for gas. Italy, half and five, and then our red handle valve, which is our kind of our Cadillac or Mercedes, it handles half, five, and 125 CSA gas rating. So that valve can be used outside even before a meter, before it gets stepped down. <coughs> All right, you know, I hate to. We're going to jump around a little bit. If you turn your catalog to page two, please, you'll see, you'll see those valves. The two green handle on the bottom are the Chinese made. The two up, the yellow handle, Italian, and the two at the top, red handle, Italian also. These valves are all available with locking levers, stainless steel handles, extensions, extensions for insulation and wing handles. We can put a wing handle on any valve. A lot of times in the southern part of the U.S., the water coming into your home or into a business is in the little box out in the front yard. And in that box there's a meter and there's also a ball valve. And you can't swing hmm. the lever handle on the valve, hence having the wing handle. And if you're involved in the heating <coughs> side at all, where you have a manifold lined up with zones for heating, you almost have to use the wing handle, otherwise the handles are knocking into each other when they're lined up. Um, they're all NSF 61-8G or NSF 372. On our website, if you ever have a contractor or an inspector, anybody that needs the certification that shows that we're third-party certified, we've got them on our website and all the spec sheets also. Once again, there's our Cadillac up through 125 on the gas, up through 2 inch like I stated. The yellow handle, which I think you are stocking, <coughs> this one you're stocking. Half and five pound gas. Once again, it's Italian, so it qualifies for the Buy American Act. And you've got all your certifications. The Chinese one, which you're not stocking. But just in case you get into a competitive situation, um, we can help you out on that. So keep in mind. A couple minutes ago, if you look at the top of page three, um, she asked if we make anything in the United States. A couple of our competitors do this, and we're not <coughs> going to light anybody or smoke and mirrors or anything like that. We bring this valve in from Italy. We bring the handle in from Italy and we have four Mexicans in our warehouse assemble it and now it's domestic. 
right. <laughs> it qualifies for that 51 percent where the labor and the in the cost is. We don't we don't sell a lot of these veils, but I just want you to know our mindset on it was if we're going to try to sneak it through as domestic, then it has to be the Italian veil and the Italian handle, which qualifies for the Buy American Act. All right. We have the valve available to you. We don't sell a lot of them. I just wanted to <coughs> show you. Do they say made in Italy or anything like that on them? Yep, underneath the handle of all our valves, right here, it'll say Italy or China. Good yeah, question. you can put them through as the domestic? They qualify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee does the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they do the same thing. I don't know any veil manufacturer that doesn't have one veil that they call domestic that's not from overseas, but assembled here. But you can't do it with a Chinese bill because it won't qualify for the Buy American Act. Usually if you have to have something domestic, or the mindset is domestic, it's going to have to be something that qualifies in the long run. Um, press. We're very big in press. Um, I know you guys do some. Um, when I was at the symposium, I told Bob that we've, we're going to do a price adjustment for you on your press. Um, I'll have that done by the end of this week. So, we'll have some new pricing. Um, we've got female by press, boiler drains, up through 4 inch, your 2.5, 3 and 4 inch on your XLC, and then your regular press on your half through 2. Our valves fit with anybody's system <coughs> except Nipco's 2.5 through 4 inch. Their jaws and their valves are completely different from everybody <coughs> else's. Everybody else's. Up through 2 inch, we work fine with Nipco, <coughs> but on the larger size only, they're the only ones we don't work with, with Vega, with Apollo, everybody else we work fine with. Any questions on the press? Any plans to do a check on the press check? Yes. We have the press check in the letter <coughs> version now. When you go into the red pages, back in the red, to page 12. You'll see a couple variations of the press that we had when we had the leaded side. Check veils are huge. So we're now getting our certifications done on the <coughs> boiler drain and the check valve for low lead. What percentage of your business is low lead compared to being on the industrial commercial side? Take, just take a guess. I'd say the phone calls are 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just as much on the potable side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the customers are really stressed, you know, when they want to take you know. Because they don't, really, they don't even have to think about it. A lot of times we get requests for it where they don't even need it. <coughs> yeah. They just don't want to have to worry about it. Right. Yeah. Nice. Is it trending more in that area? Like, it seems... Like we get a lot. We just make. We just want lead free. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We we get a lot of. Especially like on balancing valves, when we know they don't need it. But <clears throat> yeah, chiller lines, everything. They'll, they'll, yeah, they want to they want a lead free valve. It's not necessary. Right. Okay. On the gate valve side, uh, if we turn to page, let's go back to page 20. What you see are um, higher pressure bronze <coughs> gate and glow valves here. Um, I'm not sure if you're doing Milwaukee or, okay. We have started manufacturing our own. These are from Kits, these particular valves. Uh, Kits was one of the companies that was involved with Red White back when the Japanese owned it. Uh, and their deliveries are terrible. Uh, anybody that's here in the sales part has heard of Kits before. Mm -hmm. um, they used to supply a lot of valves in the plumbing industry, but they have gravitated to nothing but the industrial side of the business, the 300 pound cast steel and all that. Mm -hmm. We had a contract with them for years after we bought after the Italians bought the plant out, or bought the Japanese out, and that is ending. Uh, their deliveries are horrible. 
I probably get a call once a month from a kits rep that's looking to get rid of that line. Our deliveries have been terrible on the bronze, hmm. higher pressure stuff. Uh, we started manufacturing our own about 30 days ago. So in about the next 60 to 90 days we'll be getting shipments in and we're going to have a whole new price list. But in the meantime, um, we do have a lower cost if you turn, if I move you to backwards to page 19, I'm sorry. <coughs> These valves are available not only in the low lead, but the leaded also. These are the leaded you see up here. The low lead version are up in the front of the catalog, but it's if you can get by with brass, if there isn't a particular bronze spec that you need, and you're looking for a lower cost um, gate valve, just for somebody that's it's not a spec job or anything like that, we do have them available <coughs> in, in the leaded version. The 206 and 207 have a steam rating. The 267 and 268, I don't know if you do anything with just irrigation people or anybody that's just looking for a Inexpensive gate valve, we have them available. Which ones did you say have the steam rating? The 206 and 207. Oh, okay, I see it. Or the 206 would, have the, and 7 would have the steam rating. When you said you're going to be getting new price sheets, is there a price increase? No price increase until at least the end of this year that we know of. We have added probably uh, 50 to 60 brand new items in our catalog, um, but they're all on the PEC side. I don't think you're doing anything with, <coughs> with PECs, um, and a lot of it's on the commercial, the two and a half and three inch. So I know we talked about that, possibilities. Check valves of ours you are doing. Um, in fact, you're stocking the, the 232 and the 233 AB. On the low lead side, it's your spring check, and you're doing the 237 and the 236. <coughs> All right, so you have the spring check, and you also have your your regular swing check. These are getting used more and more and more in the industry. You can never prove that these are 100% shut off when the water's up against it. It's a metal-to-metal -metal seat. Even when it's the Teflon going up against it, it's just that flapper is always moving from pressures, changing volume. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong with the spring-loaded check. These were strictly used on pump and well systems for years and years, but the plumbing contractors that are all gravitating to this, with that spring-loaded, it's just a more positive off, and they know the system is shutting. Now, would the reason for someone to stick with a swing <coughs> be the flow rates? Are flow rates different between the two? Yeah, you do get... You do get some obstruction here, yeah. because when this flapper is all the way up allowing the flow to go through, there's a, a lot larger opening, where on this one, that diaphragm is always going back and forth, but it's always in the, it's always in the flow path. Um, but the thing to remember is, this was used on pump and well systems, so I mean the flow is always very, very good. Otherwise, people would be screaming and yelling that they had low pressure. So they work. They work just as well. You're going to see this on an old, old spec. Every spec that comes off the shelf at an engineer's place is still calling for a swing check. All right? <coughs> Keep it in mind. <laughs> this is just a lower cost version, T-style, that's available. Um, butterfly valves. Been a couple of questions about these lately. You're keeping our lug butterfly valve in stock with a ductile disc and an EPDM seat. Um, butterfly valves are, the question is coming up a lot now about potable water. This is a ductile iron body. And when the water is traveling through here, it really isn't coming in contact with anything. I mean, there's this big argument. Do you really have to have this certified for low lead use when there's there's no brass where the water's coming in contact with? Milwaukee, who you stock, and Nipco have taken this butterfly valve with an EPDM seat and an aluminum bronze disc, and they've had it certified for potable water. We're going to do the same thing. 
Um, it would be easy for us to just use the stainless steel disc here and be done with it. But then, if you're stocking our valve, you're going to be high on every job you did because the stainless steel disc is going to be more money than the aluminum bronze. It just all depends on what type of aluminum bronze this is, if it qualifies for that less than 0.25%. So we're digging into that now, but we're going to get it certified. A wafer style and a lug style both. You have to have both pretty much. Okay. Again, they're ductile iron. They're not the gray cast iron, the bodies. <clears throat> Any questions on butterflies? Anything yet? Just a comparison sheet that we have. Let me just kind of pass these down now. When we were at the uh, your symposium, <coughs> and if you don't, everybody here doesn't have to take a price book or one of these pieces of literature with you. We just wanted to look at something. And this is more from the sales side. We thought, how are we going to help you promote? Our product out in the field. Um, I just did this really fast. Doesn't really mean anything. Um, I didn't want to take your IPS logo without any permission, but this is what we can do for the salespeople out in the field. And, and we, can, we can change this. Um, one size doesn't fit all. Maybe he wants to call on somebody and everybody uses stainless steel. We can put stainless steel valves on there. If you're just going to walk around and promote butterfly valves next week, we can put your butterfly valves on there. Whatever product you want on here, we can personalize it for you. Obviously, like I said, we'll use your logo. But we've got these made up with just about every product that we stock. We can narrow it down to one size ball valve, whatever you want. So just let us know and um, we'll make these up for you. Or if you have a marketing person that wants to do it from your side, you may want to change it or put something else on there. So you're stocking our 421, which is an OSNY outside screw and yoke gate valve. Um, if you go to the catalog again on page 24, again, keep in mind all this inventory is in Pittsburgh, not very far away. Other than the gate and the gate, we have a globe valve, as you can see, the number 400. The 415 is, is a gate valve, but it does not have a rising stem. All right, that 421 is more popular because the engineer or the maintenance guy in the job, he can see that the valve is open or closed because as you turn the handle, the stem comes up and down. All right, so you can see it. The 415 is just the opposite. It's a gate valve, but this, it does not have a rising stem. So a lot of these old buildings in this part of the country and a lot of these valves are up by the ceiling and they're up against the wall and the guy's back here turning the valve, he can't have that stem going in and out. So just keep in mind we do have the non-rising stem which is the 415 and the 400 is the globe valve. Um, I don't know if you do much with these. <coughs> do your spring or your non-slam checks. We've got all kinds of them in stock in Pittsburgh and um, you should let your accounts know that you do have them. A lot of times that that globe or that check valve, that 435, that flange one that you see, if they're changing all the piping, if there's a some work being done, some maintenance, this is this this will do the same as this. Except it's like a butterfly valve, it's only about this wide. And it's a more positive off. It's the spring loaded, just like we talked about the brass check valves. These have a spring that's right on the on the flap that keeps it open and closed. Very, very, very prominent in the commercial heating side. Keep in mind that we have them. We have them in ductile, with a ductile disc, an aluminum bronze disc, and a stainless steel disc, just like the butterfly valves. That's why we have those same three discs on there. Some people call them non-slam or silent checks. Okay. We talked about the low lead law. Alright, let's um, I'm going to shift here for a second. Let's go to page 17, please.
I'm sure you're stuck in some of these stainless steel valve, but I just want to bring a couple things up. We do have stainless in stock. We do stock right through, through checks, <coughs> globes, gates, <coughs> three-piece. This one is not so prevalent because it is a um, it is a reduced port. This is a full port, the 4880. We have plenty of this product in stock. We have some rep agencies like Yates that have brought in stainless steel lines of fittings. So we're getting deeper into stainless all the time. Um, balancing valves. I mentioned earlier that we supply about 35% of Europe. Tell me a little bit of how the 9517s and 19s. Anybody sold any? Any questions on these? No, we sold them. We, we stock them, don't we, Bob? Mm -hmm. <coughs> They're in the front of the catalog in low lead. We're up to 12 inch flanged. A um, couple of uses of balancing valves. 30 story high rise. Bob lives on the 30th floor. I live on the second floor. He wants the same volume of water pressure that I get. And that's the only way you're going to accomplish it is with a, um, with a balancing valve. It, um, you go to the farthest, every floor, up in, every floor will have one of these on it, down in the mechanical room. And what the contractor, the engineer will tell the contractor that on Bob's floor, on the 30th floor, it has to be 4.2 gallons a minute. When everything is installed, they'll turn the water on. The contractor will go to the farthest place away that's being starved from the water. Our pump's down here. Bob's apartment is up here. We'll set this valve first to get his flow, and then we'll start going backwards, all the way down. For potable water use, on a closed loop system, for hydronics or HVAC, same thing. <coughs> the engineer architect, he's got the coil engineered for this room that it takes exactly two gallons a minute to get the most efficiency, to get the proper amount of BTUs. That's what the balancing valves are for. It's to balance the system. You can do it with a ball valve. Here we have these little metering stations. You can see the metering station. There's a handheld manometer. It's a computer. And the two probes go to this. And when they're measuring the water, they're measuring that differential pressure between upstream and downstream. Hmm. There's an orifice in here, a fixed orifice. And that's how they determine that we're getting the floor GPM or whatever the flow rate we need. We're turning this valve until we get to that point, and then we stop. We can lock it so that it can never be changed. It will always have that flow rate. So that's basically what they're used for. Wastewater treatment plants, they buy these stainless steel orifice plates from us. You can see there's your, there's your test points there. That will go right up against the butterfly valve. So if you, have, if you do anything with any industrial places and they're looking for a large, large way to control the flow, you can use a butterfly valve in this orifice plate. We only show up to 12 inch, but we do have them in stock up to 24. Extremely expensive. And it's not a very accurate way to measure your flow, but it works. All right? <clears throat> Questions? I know we have a group coming in at 1230, right? Any questions on the product? Any issues you have? <coughs> Those check valves, those wafer checks, those are like a double door style opening? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The spring's on both sides in reverse. We do have carbon steel um, for PPR valves. We get into a little bit of plastic. We have a plastic injection molding. I said we have two and a half plants. We make a PPR valve. Um, I don't think you're getting involved with Aquatherm yet at all. Know about it? A lot of people are using this. Okay. Why don't you quickly then turn to page five?
You see that 500 AB on the on page five, about in the middle. It's a the screen valve. We've made this valve for about 14 years for the European market because China and Europe, everything is heat fused together. They don't. Even though we make our sweat valves in, in Italy, they don't know what sweat copper is over there. Hmm. Uh, everything is either mechanical joint, but it's getting into heat fuse. And we brought these valves into the country, and we're Sales are just starting to take off. In fact, there's a couple competitors now to Aquatherm that also are interested in our valves. But this is for heat fuse. If somebody's asking you about it, um, make sure you at least you let them know that we have the valves because these valves are about a third of the cost of the Aquatherm valve. They'll work with Nyron, Aquatherm, Pestan, Aquatechniques. There's some other people coming in. In fact, the eight says the Aquatherm. Rep. Not in Pennsylvania, unfortunately. Not in Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay. we're in, yeah, we're the master distributor for the East Coast, but not in Pennsylvania, unfortunately. And again, a lot of new items on the PEC side that really do not uh, pertain to you. But um, I think I've asked you a couple times. Any questions? I know we got another group coming in in about 15, so I wanted to leave a couple minutes open. Anything you want me to touch base on, Bob? <coughs> <clears throat> the the polypropylene valves. Mm -hmm. Any reason why you'll be using that as opposed to a brass? Um, can you sub it out? Let's say someone says, "Oh, we're just using it for a water line." Could you say, "Okay, well, we, we were going to give you brass threaded. Can we? Are you okay with polypropylene threaded?" Yeah, it's just cold water, 15 psi. Is that an acceptable substitute or? Absolutely, it is. Unfortunately, I don't have, we have a valve that, um, uh, that we make at our, our plant in Italy, um, the injection plant, that will freeze but will not crack. I think I showed it to you at the symposium. Um, I don't have any literature on it yet. We've sold them in Europe for years. I've sold them in the market up in Minnesota and Wisconsin on dairy homes, dairy farms. Uh, never ever do they get all the water out of the line when they you know when they try to drain it out in the fall and these valves will expand they will not crack they're pretty pretty cool Looking do you have anybody in particular that you want us to talk to when we call that you would recommend I mean I just talk to anybody that... yeah no everybody when you call in there just about anybody can answer a question okay. for you on the technical side checking inventory um, again, look at the website. Uh, it's changing all the time, being upgraded. We incorporated the VIR, our parent company in Italy's website, about a month ago. So there's a lot of upgrades being done. Spec sheets, everything's available. Especially certifications if you have to prove something. My biggest thing would be availability when I call. Once again, we beefed up that inventory in Pittsburgh. It's pretty good. So when you call Lake Forest, when you call our office in California, uh, everybody here has my number. You can call myself or Yates because they don't open in California for three hours difference from here. So I can check inventory for you. We can check the warehouse in Pennsylvania. Don't be afraid to call. <coughs> I usually send an email to Nestle, mm -hmm. and she usually replies back within five minutes. Okay. And she can, you know, I'll say, is this in stock? <coughs> Pennsylvania. Well, then the other day I was checking some balancing valves. She said no, but we have it in Tennessee. So we just ship it out there. So. Okay. Joe, um, lug style versus a wafer valve. Why would someone <coughs> prefer one over the other? Uh, I mean, it seems like a lot of people say, hey, I want a lug, and, mm -hmm. and you, you know, wafer's a couple dollars cheaper, and really not that much cheaper, but you, you just wonder why. Someone would prefer one over the other. The lug is a truer, it's going to stay in the line. You know, you've got those lugs that those bolts are going through to hold it in. The wafer valve is just being held in between a couple flanges. And the valve really is kind of, there's really nothing going, nothing holding it as steady as there is with the lug style. I'm going to bring a picture of it. <coughs> 
I always, it's just a way for you just don't you can have the flexibility of not having it in a I always sell specific love. position. Yeah. It's just wedged between two flanges. Um, and depending on how the guy pipes it, he might run a rod through it just to kind of keep that butter that wafer from, from going anywhere. So is that what those holes are for? Which is for guiding? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But on the lug style, you actually have eight bolts going through that's holding it in place. It's a lot true. It's a lot better. Um, they can get by with wafers on wastewater treatment plants, uh, water parks, places like that where um, it's really not an, uh, you know industrial as we think about it. They can get away with it. One thing I did not mention, and um, especially in the industrial application, these are approved for dead end service. Now, any contractor that puts us at the end of the line in hopes that it's going to hold is taking a chance, but they will. All right. Normally a guy will put a blind flange back yeah. here to make sure. But they are good for dead end service. People use them for that all the time and they hold. For the people out in the field, when you get one of our butterfly bales, you'll notice after three, three inch, there's going to be four holes here on the casting of the body. And people will say, what, what are those holes for? If you scrape that paint off of there, you're going to see a grub screw. If you're going to use it for dead-end service, you can tighten those screws, all four of them, and it'll hold that seat into place better. Mm. Even though it's glued, the elastomer is all, it's all together, it's almost like a, a double edge sword. And people will ask for that. Is it good for dead-end service? Do you have grub screws? Ours do. On the lugs, you'll see them. You have to look kind of hard. You'll see like little ind indentations on the, on the side of the valve here. And that's what those are for, they're grub screws. You can tighten them down, but you don't want to over tighten them. You can crack the seat. So, But they're good for dead end service. 200 pound. Anything over that's considered a high performance butterfly bales. You must do some high performance, do you? Some. Some? Okay. Looking at your stock list here, you stock our mini ball valve little quarter inch, the regular boiler drain, the half through four inch on the press valves. Um, any questions on the flange ball valve? Who was the salesman about on that issue with the valves that came back? But we never... Oh, oh that was... Vic. Uh, I'm still kind of... That was up north. Mm -hmm. We got those like nine, two and a half inch the Daniel's man? The Daniel's? I forget. Anyway, Kim so might be in the next set. Okay, alright. She, she'll know. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> whatever that is, kind of steer them in my direction. Okay. I want to make sure we're okay there. Yeah, I have not gotten any, <laughs> nobody said anything about it since then, so I don't. How recent is this flange ball? Have you guys been doing this for a while? Page 23. Bottom of page 23, you've been stocking this 5800 yeah. flange ball valve for a couple of years from now. <coughs> that was what we... The American. Yeah, the American. Yeah, the American. American. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any plans to make a ductile version of that? I think you're going to ask that. Yeah, we really... We haven't dug into it, to be honest with you. The we American should. offer to cast iron buckle and stainless in that scene. Yeah, because yeah. we've ordered all three. Yeah. 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 yeah, we're working on uh, stainless steel flanged ball valves to, to round out that stainless steel uh, product that I was showing you. But on the four, on the, the ductile on this particular valve, we really, to be honest with you, we haven't done anything yet. We've had, you know, 40 new PEX items come out. I mean, the PEX is just growing not only on the residential side but on the commercial side too. Mm -hmm. um, which I should show you because it might uh, the AHR show. Anybody go to AHR? They waited this year. Okay. Um, this is a brand new <laughs> Rotating flange, two and a half and three inch for a commercial Upanor. Upanor is out pushing big time. So to make the transition from 
a water main or a line coming into the building where they run or run to PEX. Mm -hmm. We've got this flange with a shutoff already on it. We even have the two and a half and three inch, just a regular ball valve for the open or the, the cold expansion PEX. Mm -hmm. That's where a tool goes into the pipe, expands it, slides over the pipe, and then it compresses on its own. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> PEX. I've seen that. Well, so, makes it tool now. you it's know, again, on the commercial inch. side, I don't know if, you know, I know you guys have dabbled a little bit and talked about PEX, but um, <coughs> PEX is going to grow on the commercial too because there's been a lot of issues with uh, CPBC on commercial jobs hmm. with air testing. So, we're introducing a lot of new products. They're just not anything to talk to you about. I'd be wasting your time talking about half and three quarter inch PEX valves, all kinds of them. <laughs> so, but if you get into it, we can help you out. But again, we really appreciate everything you, you people do for us. You've been a great account for us. The numbers have grown. Um, keep this in mind. You know, whatever for you guys to take out, you can do it yourself. I can just send you this. You can take this off. You can put your IPS logo on there. Whatever fits. A little <coughs> marketing stuff. So. Let me know if you have ideas for that flyer. We'll get, we'll get done. Yeah, I don't know. Never heard Look, of see anything you may see on there, we'll get done. I know. <laughs> for the fifth time. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Hey, thanks again for the time. Thank you. <laughs>